Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome to another video. Today, I want to talk about the football manager community. And more specifically, I want to talk about draft competitions, whether they be on YouTube or Twitch or whatever. Recently, and since they've existed, these the draft mode, I've seen lots of conversations on Twitter and a bit of drama and some unhappy people. And I kind of want to I'm, I'm hopefully kind of a middleman because I'm not involved in those big streamer competitions, but I'm also a not a small little streamer so or a newer streamer. So uh, hopefully I can give you some insight and I'll try and get it from both angles and explain some. So firstly, I want to go at it from the angle of a newer, smaller streamer or YouTuber. Let's just go with streaming, but this can be exactly obviously on YouTube and stuff like this. This video arose because I saw a, a couple of conversations actually in the last few weeks regarding, I think, it, is it a streamer showdown? That's the big one, isn't it? With Dr. Benji and Lelujo and, and Zealand and stuff. Um, and these persons were legitimately asking why or why they should have smaller streamers. They shouldn't just have all the big names. They should have some smaller streamers on in these competitions as well to mix it up and some newer guys and everything to sort of build the community. And I can totally understand you know, why you do that, because if you're a new streamer, it's hard to get viewers. And if you were included in that streamer showdown or the draft competition, you'd get some more viewers. But let's take let's let, let me give you a couple of examples about why that's not as big a deal as you think it might be. So the first one is raiding. Now, raiding is a thing you can end your stream and then before you rather than just end the stream, you can basically send your viewers to another stream. Right. It's a nice way to sort of pay it forward and stuff. But in reality, it doesn't really do almost anything. I can raid somebody with 500 people, right? And we'd all say hello. And um, I tell everybody to drop them a follow and check them out if they like them. And they might get 50 follows or something like that. But people then expect their viewership to sort of jump up a degree. Let's say if they had five viewers before, they might expect 10, 15 viewers. Because they got this big raid from Zealand or whatever. A thousand people coming in. It's brilliant. In reality, you might, if you're really good and entertaining, you might gain one or two more viewers. And it's kind of the same, if you think of it, right? So you're saying, I want to be in the creator draft competition because there's loads of eyeballs on it. That's great. Makes sense. But then bear in mind, you're then, up, you're then putting yourself in a position to compete with viewers, with all the biggest streamers at the same time in the same competition. So it's not like you're going to gain a ton of viewers people are going to go and watch Ben or Lelujo or Zealand or uh, Weather Space and stuff so although he probably just quit so that's probably not watching him but like they want they go to watch these guys right so I can understand why as a small creator you'd want to get in on the act so to speak and get involved in that and stuff so I totally get it so the, the second part of this is you let's look at it from the other side, the, the, the bigger creators, you know, the guys that get most of the views on Twitch and stuff like this, right? They're building a thing. They're build. This is for a lot of these guys. It is their full time job. OK, so if I asked, I'll, I'll say Lelujo, for instance, like let's just take Lelujo. If you asked him, would you rather and. There is a bit of business in this. It's not just heart and everything. Would Hey, Lelujo, would you rather do a draft competition on Twitch with your save um, with a guy you don't know um, who's uh, who's a new streamer and stuff and you might not even get on, but, you know, you could have, you'll probably get less viewers because he's not sort of really known or whatever. You could do that. Or you could do a draft competition with all your good mates that you hang out with already and you, you, you're you really good mates with and you'll get good views and you'll probably make a bit more money because at the end of the day... They, we have to make money. It is a career, and it's usually not a very long career at all. Another side of things, and just if just so you're aware, me personally, and that's why I think I'm a sort of good person to talk about this. Me personally, I just don't have any interest in the draft mode. I think I did it once at Sports Interactive for that competition where I got beaten by a FIFA coin selling YouTuber. Not bitter, um, but. I spent all my money on fullbacks. It was a mistake. Uh, but I just don't enjoy that competitive nature of football manager. I The reason I love football manager is I can, when I was a kid, I could lock myself away in my bedroom and play for 20 hours. And it was just me versus the AI. So I play League of Legends if I want to be 
realise that I'm shit at games and get abuse and stuff like that. So Football Manager for me is a single player game. That's just my personal preference. I've been asked to go on lots of these streaming competitions and drafts and stuff. And it's just no insult to anybody. It's just not really my thing. Right. So. And also there's. On the flip side of this, you've got the big, the streamer showdowns and stuff like this, these sort of all the big, but there's tons of other con content creators making draft competitions. And I think, I think that's where you've got to look at it. You've got to remember like from a business aspect, I think Dr. Like, I don't keep up to date with all the goings on of the streamer show. I'm not even a hundred percent sure if it's still called that. I think it is. Um, but they, they're trying to make a business. These guys are doing it for a job and trying to make money, right? So, brilliantly, and um, they got sponsorship in the last one. I think it was KFC Gaming or something. They did some, spot. I don't really what, like I said, I'm not really into it, but uh, they got some sponsorship. That's fucking amazing. That is massive for the community as a thing that we got to a point these guys made something, I think Fox in the Box started it and then Dr. Benji took over, that gaming companies want to go, hey, we'll sponsor it. But gaming companies aren't charities, right? This, this KFC gaming, right? They, obviously, they just want advertising. But they want numbers. So if Dr. Benji can go to them while they're discussing, because Dr. Benji wants to make some money, not only to pay himself, but all the people, you know, that help him out. is a ton of work that goes into these things. KFC are going to say, or companies in general are going to say, hey, we want certain assurances. Like, what sort of numbers do you get? How many viewers do you get? And stuff like this. So naturally, Ben is going to want to get not only his mates, because naturally, but also the bigger streamers, because that provides bigger numbers, so they can get deals like that. If they said, if Dr. Benji was like, hey, KFC, and they're like, wow, Ben, you're a really big streamer. That's cool. We'd like to work with you. What, what, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm doing a draft competition with these seven other guys. And they're like, brilliant. Give us the names. And these guys are like averaging 10 viewers. KFC are going to like, well, that's not worth our time. We'll give you a tenner. There you go. Have a bucket of chicken and we'll call that sponsorship. So naturally, from a business perspective, you need the most, you need the most popular. If it was me, and this is purely just, and, and maybe this happens already. Like I said, I don't keep that close to detail. I think what I, I'm not even sure how many people take part in the big draft competitions. Let's say eight, right? If it was me running one, I think I'd do the same as any, any of the other big ones. Is like, I'd get my friends and popular people, but I think I'd maybe save one spot of the draft for like the guest appearance, the challenger, and make it a fun thing is almost like this is the new guy. So you've got your seven guys that are popular and something, but maybe get the new guy in and make it a big deal. Like if he beats anybody and stuff like that, that they have to pay a forfeit, you know, stuff, fun stuff like that. But like, I'm not going to teach Ben and the people making the decisions to suck eggs. He knows what he's fucking doing. He's very good. So like, I'm sure all these things I've thought about, but I just think it's important to go in a, in a, in an ideal world with, with fluffy rainbows and, and, and unicorns and fluffy clouds and stuff. We'd all help each other out equally, constantly, all the time and, and stuff like these. But I do urge you to remember that these these top streamers, the the top 1% of the football manager community, the, there's like six or seven guys now, I think, I'm not sure, but that do it as a full-time job. And a full-time job with in such a weird little career, a little niche career, is not we're probably unlikely going to be doing it 20 years time. This is not a thing. So whilst Lelujo, Work the Space, Zealand, Ben, the other guys are popular, they should milk it for all their word. Like they, they really should. Ben's got a new kid and stuff like for their future. They're doing, they're doing the right things and they're doing really well. And like I said, like it's no, it's no, um, secret that me and Ben don't really get on. It's just a clash of personalities. It's not a big deal. It, it's funny when Trump people make it a big deal. Even me and Ben are kind of, I'm sure we both just laugh at it when people say stuff. But like, so the fact that I we're not really mates at all should, you know, mean something a little bit more that I'm coming actually defending these guys. I, I think it's unfair because somebody's become, because somebody's become popular I think it's a little bit unfair to expect them to, to constantly help the next new guy. At the end of the day, it is helping, like, and don't get me wrong, all of these guys that I've mentioned, 
do tons of stuff. Like I said, they do the raiding and stuff, and they have helped tons of YouTubers. Pretty much every one of those guys will, if you DM them a question and say, hey, can I, can I get some help with this thing? A lot of them, most of them, all of them will, will help you out. So it's like, but you can't expect them to put their career on hold and make less money in this very short career just to help the new guy. Because in essence, if you want to look at the cold hard facts, you're, these little streamers are competition. <laughs> They're doing the same job. You know, there's a finite people of viewers that watch Football Manager. So, you know, I'm not saying that they're not helping people because they don't want to grow. I'm just saying how great it is that these larger streamers and these people do help other people when they don't have to. They shouldn't feel like they have to or guilted into it. Everybody has their own level of stuff they want to do and everything. But And this just brings me on to my last point about the football manager community, whenever there is the slightest little bit of drama, like somebody falls out or, you know, somebody was using a downloaded tactic or save scumming, hashtag narrative, whatever it is. It's like people desperately want the drama. So they, they leap onto it. And go, oh my God, drama, the football manager content creator scene is crazy. It's so much. Drama. It's really not, man. If you, if you are involved in any other game community, Football Manager is just the most chill, friendly, lovely place. I've been doing YouTube for five years, right? I have one guy that I spoke about the other day that is my... I've got one hater, random dude that leaves a random horrible comment on my videos every day. I, I think I'd, at this point I kind of miss him if he left. But this community is amazing. The fact that I know, even as a competitor, I could message Lelujo or whoever and stuff or smaller street and ask for help or they can message me or whoever and everybody helps each other in, in what in reality is a competitive marketplace. If you just break it down to the very sort of, you know, business facts, you're competitors of each other so that any help, you don't see Nike going, oh, Adidas, you're, you're struggling a little bit. Do you want... Do you want us to help you with some designs <laughs> like that's that's nuts but it's it's weird how we fully expect it so all i'm saying is that despite my lack of interest in the draft mode i think it is really important and something we should all be proud of yeah i had nothing to do with making it or even producing it or even being on it but as a community as a thing we should be proud that Ben's made this thing with the help of all these guys that gets people to watch, lots of people to watch, gets people excited about, and to the point where they're getting gaming sponsorships. We should be, whether you like Ben or whoever or not, you should be delighted that that's the case. I think that's, I think it's really good. And, and like I said, it's not something I'm interested in viewing as, it's just not my preference, but like, I think it's crazy good. I think the my only, and I'm going to caveat this, and this may be just my snowflake personality, and the only thing, and one of the reasons I don't do draft competitions is I'm not really about the banter. Because I don't mind banter between mates, right? Like, private, when you know somebody really well, you can say anything, and it's a laugh and stuff like this. But I'm not... Because most of the time, most of the time, banter is just like a code word for being rude to somebody, but it's not serious, isn't it? That's that's what it is. Nobody says banter after saying, oh, you look lovely today, <laughs> banter. Like, it's it's a, a jokey insult. And that's all well and good. I'm fine with that. That's great and stuff. But I think when you do it in a public space, like, let's say, let's just take two, because I know they're, because they've got a podcast and stuff together. Say Ben and Zealand, right? They can say pretty much anything to each other. They get on. It's all good, right? They know. Trouble is, they've got like thousands of people watching them. And when Ben says something rude to Zealand as a joke or whatever, that's all good. But the trouble is, let's, how, what do I call these fans? Excitable fans. I just, I just feel like a few excitable fans can take it a bit too far. It's like going to war for somebody, isn't it? It's like, I think whenever you've got an audience, you've got to be very careful about like dissing somebody or just in, in passing um, that, you're not happy with because somebody who really enjoys your content who loves you can then take it upon themselves think they're doing you a really good favor by going oh i'm gonna fucking send them some abuse because that'll teach them they shouldn't they shouldn't mess with my 
friend, my my YouTuber that I like and stuff. So, but overall, I think the football manager community is brilliant and it's great to see it. Just everybody chatting about the game on Twitter and most of the time it's not drama and it's a lovely place to be. Like, I play League of Legends, right? So, in terms of community <laughs> satisfaction, right? I've probably got the, like, the opposite ends of the spectrum, right? But, so I could just see how bad it is and then you look at Football Manager and go, this, it's amazing. But all I, all I want to say to whoever's watching this is... Cut the big guys some slack. They 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 are not there to get views for all the new guys. That's not their job. And whenever somebody or one of them does something like that, whether that's help out somebody or raid somebody or get them on, do a, do a draft mode YouTube video or whatever with them, do an interview, you know, that's fucking great and, and should be praised. But you shouldn't expect it. Lelujo doesn't owe new streamers anything. Like, and also with new streamers, I think don't focus on your stream, your setup, your brand, your the way you do things. Football Manager is not a massive category on Twitch. If I click on Football Manager... It's not like you have to scroll down seven pages. So we're very lucky in that because it just gets lost. If you're the 700th most popular League of Legends streamer, no one's scrolling down. But you can get found quite easily on Football Managers. Just, just make your stream good. Make your... Uh, like, increase all your other socials so you can promote those things, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is, to, to get people to drive viewers. Having raids, having being on the streamer showdown or whatever will not grow you nowhere near as much as you think. And I'm, we all made the same mistake. I remember my, the first time I got a big raid, I was like, fucking hell, this, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go now. Like this is amazing and stuff, but it, it doesn't change the needle. It's just a nice moment. Um, so yeah, work hard. There's more streamers now than there ever has been in football manager. When I started, there was, during the summer, there'd be like two or three people streaming Football Manager. And now there's 20, 30 and stuff. And there is still a space. You can do it. You can go pro. You can do it. Just work on yourself and don't expect like a magic bullet. You know, this luck thing they talk about on Twitch. And there is a massive chunk of luck on Twitch. But that's not... Getting raided is not the lucky thing. If you get raided by Zealand, you get a ton of viewers, right? If you get raided by Zealand, it's not going to change pretty much anything it might get you to an affiliate or something it might get you one or two more viewers and 50 more followers but that it's nowhere near as powerful as you think it is so work on increasing your own visibility like i said social medias like there needs to be some good football manager tiktok accounts i even thought about doing it because you could do some really fun stuff with it do that direct people to your stream go watch harris heller videos Twitch is shit for discoverability. Grow everywhere else, send them to Twitch, essentially. Okay, this has turned into a random video, but like, that's it. So, summary, final thoughts. I think draft competitions on YouTube and Twitch are a fantastic thing. I don't want smaller YouTubers getting butt hurt because they're not being invited. See it from the other side. Okay, see it from these guys who are trying to make a living. They're trying to earn a wage. Not only now, but it's a short career. They're trying to make some money now. Like, it's important. I'm making money because I can buy a house. Everybody's doing, has their target. And it's not, it'd be great if everybody helped all the people all the time and stuff like that. But they've, you know, you've got to think of yourself sometimes when it comes to YouTube and business and viewers and streams. But also just, why would, if Ben's going to hang out or Lelujo's going to hang out with all these these people for hours on ends over the course of a weekend, of course he's going to want to hang out with his friends as well rather than some random people. It just makes sense, right? So there we go. There's my thoughts on it. I'd love to know your thoughts on it, how you can improve it. I'm sure like if Ben or whoever, or because there's like, there's a good like eight or 10 draft competitions going at the moment. Like get yourself in on them because if you're a small streamer, get yourself into one of those small draft competitions because you're with like-minded people. So there might be 10 of you who are similar viewers that go, okay, we get tons less views on our draft competition, but 
we can help each other out, we can cross pollinate, we can work together, all sorts of stuff you can do. But just, but just work your ass off and get there, and cut a bit of slack to these guys. They, I, I would say, the vast majority of let's say people over ten thousand subscribers on YouTube for Football Manager are incredibly helpful, generous with their time. They will answer your questions and help you out in any way, shape, or form. Um, but also, I know, like I said, I know a lot of these, maybe these guys will be watching. So if you have any ideas to improve the draft competitions or stuff you'd like to see in them, uh, changes, leave it in the comments below. I'm sure loads of you have got some tons of good ideas. So, you know, anybody that wants to do a draft competition or does do a draft competition can go through the comments and maybe get some ideas as well. Um, but there we go. There is my rant. It's not drama filled. See, it's lovely, isn't it? Just everybody get on and hug and stuff. It's all good. Draft competitions are great. I wish Football Manager would get more involved in them, to be honest. But ho ho. Oh, and one final point, because somebody's gonna say it. Football Manager is not an esport. It's not a fucking esport. I've watched esports for ten years, right? Football Manager is not a fucking esport. If there's an esport that includes sitting at the table, having kicked off, and the player just sitting there for ninety percent of the time watching the screen, that is not an esport. <laughs> Imagine that. And go. Oh, John's looking focused. It's ridiculous. Right, there we go. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.